Aleluia. Ancient Zion King, you reign. You reign. Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. They say, They that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, say they shall reign in life by one, Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. The reason we reign is because, Lord, you have reigned. The reason that we stand here today is because, Lord, you stood for us. The reason that we are alive is because, Lord, you gave your life for us. We come to you in total submission, asking that, Lord, you be exalted in our midst this evening. Amen. Scripture says that the entrance of your word giveth life, it giveth understanding to the simple. Father, Lord, even as we open scriptures today, we pray that, Lord, these words will become spirit and life. We pray that these very words, they, should, they will leap out of the Bible and minister to each and every one person. We thank you, Father. We ask that, Lord, you are knowing this hour, that, Lord, every hearer, every person that hears us, whether being here, being online, Lord, we all shall be blessed, and you all shall give us a word today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mm. You may have your seats. You're all welcome to, uh, to this Bible study, also known as Digging Deep. Excited to be in your midst once again to bring God's, words to, God's word to you. I want to take time to welcome everybody. You're looking great this evening. I see Sister Sonia in the house. Now that I've seen you, I think you might do a duet together sometime. Sometime in the middle of this service, so get ready. Somebody give her a mic to hold. Let her have her st stand by. I'm, I'm inspired now to sing. Inspiration just came. All right. So the last time I uh, happened to be here ministering was communion service. Uh, we, the, the topic, uh, as I mentioned, was something that the Lord dropped in my heart. Uh, it was just, just like a phrase, skilled in the word of God. And I think we're going to continue in that manner uh, this evening. Um, we've been hearing about the word of God. And as I mentioned that last time, it's been a huge blessing in my life honestly it's been a huge blessing um the summary of the last message i was supporting to bring your way was god uh, wants us to approach his word not in a haphazard manner not in a zigzag manner but there's a systematic approach when we um when we approach the word of God, just like you build a house, you have a foundation, you start putting walls, everything comes in place. Uh, I did make mention that, look, somebody can get born again, and the first message the person hears is, or sermon he hears, is a, a message on prosperity. Even though that message is very good, that can hurt him, because that person has not been trained to know how to manage that realm, that, the responsibility that comes with that realm. He, did, he wouldn't understand that in this kingdom, we don't own anything. We are always steward. In fact, if you claim to own anything, you are considered like a rebel. And the Bible says a man should be found what? Uh, faithful. It, it, it was, a steward should be found faithful. So it matters how the word of God, how, how the word of God comes to us. And we all need to be skilled in knowing how to apply the word of God. I did also mention in that message that uh, sometimes... Uh, it appears that uh, for believers, we just we throw anything and say anything that will stick on the wall. Uh, let's try this. Let's try the blood of Jesus. Let's try the name of Jesus. Let's try seed. Let's try offering. Let's try this. Let's try communion. Uh, and the danger there is that one of them will walk. And that's the, honestly the danger. One of them will walk. The ability to not repeat it becomes the challenge. And it's my prayer that the Lord will give us insight and revelation to know how to apply revelation and truth in our lives in the name of Jesus. While I was wrapping up, I did make mention that, that there, are, there are five interactions that we have uh, with the Word of God. And that's what's going to be our focus this evening. Those five interactions, that's going to go, be our focus this evening. So learning and applying scriptures in our life is something every Christian should be acquainted to. I, I, I call it the five ways if which we can make the Bibles are. Th those five things I mentioned last time, which was hearing, reading, uh, studying, memorizing, and 
meditation. I call it the five ways in, in which we can make this Bible ours. These five methods of learning scripture uh, can be compared uh, with our five fingers. So, um, some of us might have seen that illustration in the past. It can be compared to our five fingers. Let somebody, let the house, let's just give a wave offering to the Lord. All right, praise the Lord. Uh, while you have done that, can you look at your hands? And because um, I'm about to ask you a question, maybe a, rhet a rhetorical question. Would there be any of those digits, any of your fingers that you be, you be readily want to give away? That you just like, mm, this one is not so important. Is there anybody here? You can easily just say, maybe this one, this one. Right? Is there anybody like that? I don't think so. Right? B because all five fingers are what? They're important. They're important. And so also, so also, um, even though all five fingers will not do the same thing, right? But all five fingers are what? They are red, they are important to the greater sum of, of it all. So, um, I'm looking closely. Does everyone have an object, something that you can hold? I have my Bible here. I ha I need, okay, everybody has something. Kali is showing his phone. It would be nice if all of us had our Bible for this illustration, but any physical object will suffice. So we are gonna, we're going to have some practical demonstrations in the course of this ministration. I'm going to be asking you, using one finger and using multiple fingers, how you can grip something, how you can actually grip something. Because what we understand is that if you, ha if you use your five fingers to... Uh, to lay hold on something, like, just like I'm laying hold on my Bible right now, it gives me a very firm grasp compared to when I'm going to use just one finger or two fingers and so on and so forth. So for us to have a full grasp of the Bible, uh, we're going to, we, we need all five fingers to lay hold on, uh, the, on the Word of God. We can get a grasp of the Word of God. Now, um, I did have this on the slide, uh, so media team, if you don't mind, can you, can you show that finger illustration? All right, so that is it right there. That's why I was saying if you have a Bible, it would be nice. But if you don't have a Bible, uh, if you have a pen, anything will work because we're going to be practicalizing it. So that is the illustration right there. Um, and we're going to walk through each and every one of these uh, this evening pretty fast. So, is, so if a person hears, reads, studies, memorize, and meditate on the Word of God, he or she will have a full grasp of the truth, and it, it will become, it will be part of that person. It, be, it will be part of that person's life. So, um, let's all participate as we carry on into this uh, illustration. The very first finger uh, we're going to start from is the smallest finger. What's the other name for the smallest finger? What do we call that? Pinky. Yeah, Pinky. You know that something recently or maybe five, ten years ago. They call it pinky, right? All right. So um, let me see how many of you can pick up your Bible and object with that pinky. Let's do that real fast. Try it. Just the pinky. Don't use a lot that don't use a lot that finger to what? To support it. I'm looking at the King Jude. He shoots basketball very well with his hand, but <laughs> all right. He says no. Uh, I can probably do some trick here with my pen but I still need support of yeah maybe I don't know but uh, you're not going to have a very good grip a very good grasp with just what one finger so the first finger represents here uh, let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 10 we're going to read verse 17 a very popular verse and pop, pop first can quote it off her it said that so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, the question here is, what word are you hearing? What word of God are you hearing? Are you putting yourself in a position where you are going to hear the word of God? Uh, this is not, it's not hearsay, it's not hearing rumors, it's not hearing a side comment, but are you actually positioning yourself whereby you can what hear the truth in god's word or do we go to places right sometimes you see a lot of these churches that it's so glaring that what they do there is it's not the right thing 
but do we do, do we find ourselves going to places where the word of god is not being taught or do we find ourselves trying to hear things that we that we get us tickled the bible says in hebrews uh 4 12 that the word of god is like a, is like a, is like a sword that cuts even to the bone and marrow are we aligning that word of god to what to cut us to shape us to put us to where we want or we just want to hear things that we want um that will or we just want to hear things that will tickle our ears or tickle, tickle our fancy praise the name of the lord so where do we go to hear the word of god that's the question i'm asking this evening where do you go ask yourself where do you go bless the lord a lot of you are here this evening you are at the church that is where you're hearing god's word or you could also go online just like many people listening to me online and there are several um websites there are a lot of materials online where you can go towards hear god's word so many places but the question it still begs the question why do we want to hear god's word what is the reason we hear God's word? And we have already answered that question from Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of what? Christ. We must hear the word of God. We must hear the word of Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So shall the words that go out of my mouth, it shall what? It shall accomplish the purpose for which I have set it forth. So, when God's word comes, it, it, it doesn't just go out blank. It doesn't go out void. It goes out to what? Accomplish the purpose of what God tells us. There's a translation I like about Hebrews 4 verse 12, I think. So it says that uh, the word of God is living and active. That word of God is living and active, very active. So it is important that we what? Hear God's word. We must hear it. We must hear it. But I, 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 I don't want to just tie it down to only hearing a message through a sermon or, uh, or, or through a preacher hearing the word of god too in this context can also cover actually hearing the word the text of the bible being actually being read out that yeah being read out so you can actually hear god's word uh, like w when we read scriptures right we can actually hear it and that once again as i said the word of god is is active is breathing and it is it's alive can actually cause transformation i remember some years ago i was having challenges at my work and it had to do with my boss and some other circumstances like that and i was in the media booth uh, pastor fumi was preaching here she was just starting the message and she was just reading i think from deuteronomy and all of a sudden something just clicked she hasn't started preaching she had not started preaching right and guess what the holy spirit just told me how i needed to pray in less than one week i don't know if you remember i came back and gave the testimony here so also hearing the word of god just reading it and when, when it's being read and you hear it reading the text can also impart you I, I remember the first time i started reading or hearing the word of god i was i just got born again two or three years back at home i had ordered or requested for a free copy of the new testament in cassette tapes and i was just playing it whether I'm, whatever i'm doing i just just played i just played i remember i can't remember the synoptic that matthew mark or luke as i was hearing it i just i could hear the lord telling me that he wants to have a personal relationship with me the, 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 he wasn't saying it at that time but i could just hear that voice and ever since then that thing sank in me and i always knew that god for anything he always want that personal relationship that personal time with me hallelujah so you can also hear the word of god um in my car if you go into my car i have i, I bought a cd uh cassette tape is old now i have the message i just slot in before the pandemic before i start now working from home the drive was about a decent 20 minutes i just play the word word of god it is very helpful and for those who who, who wants to read the Bible and you have probably never succeeded in going through the Bible you can actually hear the Bible in that manner you can hear the Bible from by just what listening and it can make impact in your life because the Bible said the Word of God is active and and, 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 and is sharper okay what's the word is active and alive it's quick sharper Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 eh? that's what I'm trying to quote but talking about hearing hearing is it's, it's one of the out of these five 
interactions we have with the Bible is one of the, I would say, the easiest one to do. Why I say it is easy is because it demands the, the least effort. As we start progressing to reading, to studying, to memorizing and meditation, you, you, you realize that what <laughs> it is not taking effort. It's not you taking deliberate action to, to do what. So it's very easy. What, what does it take to hear the word of God? Just get yourself here. Or if you couldn't get yourself, turn on your radio to a Christian station or turn on YouTube or turn on TBN. It is the least effort. And, and that's why most times we, we call it the very beginning point. You have to hear the word of God. All right. Uh, let's keep to the next one. The next one is what? Read. So now we now have two fingers. So quick demonstration. How I many of you can grab your Bible, whatever object you're holding? Let me see how, if, how, how firm your grip is. Two fingers. Ugo, I'm looking at you. Two fingers. Grab whatever you're holding there ha, and send me how firm it is. All right. I, I know she's using your thumb. Don't use your thumb. <laughs> she did like this. No, just two fingers. We start using. Oh, no, no, not your thumb. All right. I see a lot of you. That grip. How firm it is. All right. Not, not firm, right? So it, it reminds me of something that in a code that they normally see. They say it's like taking candy from a word. <laughs> from a word, baby's hand. So I'm looking at that young man behind you. That young man that his mother is holding. If you should hold something, <laughs> anybody here can just like snap it. So your, your two fingers is not working very well, right? All right, let's go. So what, what scripture are we going to read here? Let's um, let's read Revelation chapter one verse three. We're, we're on the second finger now. We have to move fast. Blessed is he who reads, and those who hear the words. Of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near so what is the purpose for us reading why do we read the Bible the reason we read is because we want to hear God speak to us the reason we read is for us to know what God is telling us so we can keep it and we want can what do it uh that translate that verse that um excuse me <coughs> that word read there in his actual translation it means to give audience right that's what it means so when you open your bible you want to read you are actually giving audience to god you are giving or they say god i am here for you to what speak to me i'm giving you an opportunity to come into my heart to change me that is what you are doing this is very different from reading early textbook or early magazine or whatever or when you are reading to pass a, a test it's very different because this is more like a word relationship it's more like a relationship don't ever read your bible uh, 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 like you are trying to pass a test and your fortunate thing is that some believers they do that the way they, they read their Bible to pass the test is that in their mind, mentally, they have created a checklist. And that checklist is for me to just do what I have done it today. So they are like trying to pass. So, okay, yes. They don't give the opportunity to for, for what God to what speak to them. The key point here is what you have to give audience when you read the Word of God. You have to give audience to God. Ask chapter 8. I'm going to read verses 28, 29, and 30. All right, as it said, was returning, okay, and sitting on a chariot. I think he's talking about the Ethiopian eunuch. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. This verse. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. Verse 30. I think we'll stop here. So Philip ran to him. And heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? Do you understand what you are reading? So, how do we read the scripture? Have we ever been taught how to read the scripture? Have we ever got to a point where you say, I need to know what to read in the scripture? Or do you or, or how do you expect to know if you have not been what taught? We see this story. Philip approached the chariot and asked him, do you understand what you are reading? So you need to know 
what to read. You need to know. I remember a brother has gone. He reached out to me some months ago. He had preached to somebody and the person gave his life to Christ. He called me. I was like, is everything okay? He said, yes. He said, the person that I just ministered to, he asked me, and got born again for the very first time. He asked me, what do I read? Where do I read? Right? And I remember a joke one of my pastors would always tell me when they ask him, where do you read? You tell you read inside the cover. <laughs> but uh, this was no time for joke, right? So I said, ah, that's a good question. I said, let him start from what? John. Let him start from the book of John. I think John, oh, sometimes the synoptics are easy, but, but John is a very good place. I norm- do recommend people to read. Uh, you can also read a proverb. Uh, there are 31 proverbs. You could read one each, each day, each chapter, one day. But that's a good point because sometimes people really don't know where to read. Especially they just got born again or, or they're having their quiet time. They don't know what to read. And you might just end up finding yourself in, um, uh, somewhere, maybe like in Leviticus, and you are reading there. <laughs> you only need somebody like Sister Tonya to come and explain it for you. Is it truth? Or you get to that place in the Bible where it says, that begetted, that begetted, that begetted. <laughs> you be like, what is going on? So it's important that you know what you read. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Habakkuk 2. All right. So I will stand my watch and set my face on the rampart and watch to see what, will, uh, what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tables, that he may run who reads it. Now, this is the story of the prophet Habakkuk. He was trying to have, um, he was trying to have a quiet time, right? And we are told that uh, he waited and watched for God to speak to him. He waited and watched for what? When he was having his quiet time, for God to speak to him. When, when we go to scripture, do we, do, we have, do we wait for God to speak to us? When we have our quiet time, do we, do we wait? When we read the Bible, do we wait? Habakkuk here said he washed, he waited and he washed. If you have said it here multiple times, if you are having drive through quiet times, drive through times, you know what I mean by drive through You just, you are dressing up, you are having your quiet time. Uh, that popular minus, uh, minus Satan plus Jesus. You just keep going. You it, and you pick up your Bible just for, and you quickly flip something and read. You don't give audience. That is not going to work. When you come to fellowship with God, when you come to fellowship with God in His Word, you have to give Him what audience. You have to give audience. Do I respond? How do I respond when the Lord speaks to me? Yeah, because when you come to the Lord, the Lord is going to speak. How do you respond when the... Uh, are you saying, yes, Lord, I need to do something? I need to make an adjustment? Or do I need to write it down? There comes a point where you have to what? Document it, where you have to journal it. We see this in Habakkuk 2 verse 2. He was having his quiet time. So in your quiet time, you can actually journal. You can journal and say, Oh Lord, well, you told me today, this, that, this. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So, um, let's, um, let's go to the third finger. Time is of the essence. So, the third finger is study, right? Study. All right. So, if you can flash that, yes, the third finger is study. And um, so, let's try that now, really fast. Let's see the grip. Let's see the grip. Is the grip getting tighter? It will be getting tighter. All right. Oh, she did a good job. Okay, good job. Okay. All right. So Acts chapter seventeen, verses eleven. Acts chapter seventeen, verses eleven. We're going to read that. It says, uh, "These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find." out whether these things were so. All right. Do we approach the word of God with the eagerness to know more? That is the question here. Do we approach the word of God with the eagerness to know more? Not just what the Bi- not just what we read, right? But we want to know what does this actually mean? What not just what it says or well, 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 we can say what it says, but also what it means. 
and also how can I what apply to my life so studying is searching the scripture to see what it says is true just like we saw in this scripture it said to find out whether these things were so so studying is searching the scripture to find out what is being said is true don't take anything you see out there don't just take it don't take it in fact i want to say shame to you if, if you do that but don't, don't don't do it don't 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 take whatever you see out there and uh, in this internet age there are a lot of things out there where people can disseminate information things can go viral you have to search for yourself you have to go back and study for yourself this this gentleman here who were they trying to check out they were trying to check out the, the great apostle apostle paul apostle paul I, I consider to be one of the greatest apostles of all time but nevertheless they still have what they still have to go what go back and check to see whether it is what whether it is true so don't take it even if it's coming from me coming from early bus in here go back and what check it for yourself go back and check it for yourself praise the lord searching the scripture breeds confirmation confirmation breeds conviction and conviction breeds what application we have a lot of christians today who are not what convicted when you speak to them you offer truth you, you you begin to know that do you really know what you believe the problem there it comes from the fact that they have not taken time to study when you take time to study that study will breed what it will it will breed a confirmation and that confirmation we give birth to what conviction and that conviction we give birth to what uh, to application you will know how to apply the word of god in your life so very important especially in these end days in these end times we need christians who are who are convicted who who are convicted for what they know hallelujah ezra chapter 7 verse 10 Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 he said this was because Ezra had determined to study and to obey the law of the Lord and to teach those decrees in regulations to the people of Israel great scripture he says Ezra determined in himself he wanted to study practice and preach it so that so we have to come to that point where we are determined say look i'm going to study and the reason you are studying because you want to preach it you want to what apply it in your life hallelujah studying is digging deeper looking beyond what is in the page looking looking beyond what is in the page of what it truly means the question to ask yourself am i digging deeper or just barely scratching the surface i, I love this Bible study that we have here, we call it um, digging deep, right? Ask yourself, am I digging deep or am I just scratching the surface? Have I ever had the opportunity to have someone teach me how to study the scripture? Are you teaching somebody else how to study the scripture? Are you actively studying or are you just studying based on the fact that you have been told that you teach a Bible study or you lead a Bible study? So, the only time you come to the word of God will be because you are <coughs> because you have been told that you will lead a, a teaching or what. We have to study at all times. Praise the Lord. We have to study at all times. Um, I want to move on to number four because of time, but I need to say this. Something that is very common, uh, the word study is very common with students, um, especially college students. And I, I know a bunch of us here um we have higher degrees and even up to phds in the house uh, you just want to ask yourself how do you how did you study when you were in school it's, it's a genuine question to so ask yourself i remember when i was a student i remember things that i did all of you remember things that you did um some of you 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 went to class you studied at night you got several textbooks. Some of you went to office hours. Some of you went to see your professor. Some of you formed study groups. Some of you did did a whole lot of stuff. Drank coffee. Um, but we are all doing that to what study those aca in academia academia material, right? 
I'm not saying you should do that for the word of God. What I'm saying, maybe, yeah, probably do like 40%. Seriously, just do 40%. Do 40%. I'm not saying do like how you read it, but try and see wh- what it will do to your life. Pastor, Pastor Mike, we always say God will come and check you out. <laughs> yeah, God, God will check you out. Honestly, and <laughs> if you really reflect, if you really reflect how you study to pass an exam, what you do, all the gymnastics you do, yeah, and you ask yourself, do, am I giving half of that effort to study this thing that has life? Praise the Lord. It's a food for thought. Fourth finger, because of our time, let's move on. Um, fourth finger is what? Um, to memorize. So let, let's, let's go. We're getting there. Let's see. Fourth finger, let's quickly practicalize that. Fourth finger. All right. So I see the group is, the group is gradually getting there. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> Psalm 119, we're going to read verses 9. And 11, just two verses, Psalm 119. Uh, the, the fourth finger is memorize, yes, is to memorize scripture. All right, to memorize. Oh, Psalm 119, verses 9. Um, so it says, How can a young man, how can a young person, okay, um, how can a young person stay pure by observing the word? All right, uh, I think I probably had this in. King James Version, Psalm 119. All right. It says, So, how can a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed to the word of God? Now, let's keep to verse 11. It's okay. This will work as well. Verse 11 says, The word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. The word of God have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. So, why do we memorize the scripture according to this verse? Why do we memorize it? We memorize it because we want to live in accordance to God's law. We hide, we intentionally memorize Bible verses in our hearts so that we can live according to God's law and be able to stay away from sin, to live our life free from the yoke of sin. Hallelujah. So we have to memorize scripture. A typical example of somebody that did this is our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was confronted in the wilderness during his temptation, Satan will come. He will bring a distorted truth, half truth. But every time, what did Jesus Christ do? We are told that Jesus Christ gave the full word truth. He gave the word full truth. He did not run to go and get what? His scroll. He did not run to go look for his Bible or his Bible in his phone. It's just what came out of what? Him. And he what? Gave the scripture. Right? So it's, it's we have to what? memorize scripture is very important we have to memorize scripture uh so what happens if you suddenly misplace your ba- your phone or you're in a position where you or you misplace your bible or in a place where you cannot um where you're just in a crowd and somebody is saying something that sounds pervasive of the word of god and you know that this thing the person is saying is not correct you don't have to at that time the word that you have put in you you have hid in your heart that is what is going to come out Hallelujah. Now, there are four things that happen to us when we have scriptures in our hearts, when we choose to memorize scripture. Number one, we find favor with God. Number two, we're going to, we're going to trust him. Number three, we're going to turn away from evil. And number four, we're going to have healing and refreshment. We're going to have healing. Those are the things that happen to us when we put scriptures in our heart. We will put that active living word in our heart. The Bible says um, in John 14, verse 26, it said, Whatever the Holy, it said, I will bring to remembrance whatever the Holy Spirit has what said unto you. When you take time to memorize scripture, it puts you at an advantage. Yes, the Holy Spirit can remind you of anything. You're, you're, you're probably not even choose to memorize before in the past and I've had that happen to me even while I was here in the altar I, there's some scriptures I never memorized and I was ministering and it came out I was like ah okay but when you choose to memorize scripture it puts you at an advantage hallelujah number five <laughs> all right number five let's see that now let's, let's go let's see how it is now all right full grip right I feel some, you know, I think in Ephesians chapter 6 and 17, the Bible tells us that what? The word of God is a what? It's a, it's a sword, right? It's one of those um, armors that we put on. All right. 
<laughs> yeah, so I'm, let's weed let's it. You see, we have a full grip. We have a what? Full grip. Okay, uh, 17, okay. It says the sword, yes, the sword of the spirit. Yep, the sword of the spirit, which is the word, word of God. So when you have a full grip like this, yes, you can effectively what? Use the word of God. The word of God becomes part of you. Hallelujah. If, um, Psalm, Psalm 1, let's read verses 2 and 3. Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3, we are looking at meditate on the word of God, the last finger in, the, in this illustration. He says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law he meditates day and night. Go to the next verse. He said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his, its fruit in its season. Those leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper the word meditate uh, meditation is a very powerful principle um in in his own bible study we can look at it in three <laughs> three meetings like this but we're just going to scratch a little bit of it uh meditation in the actual meaning of it means to to murmur or to ponder i don't know have you ever seen somebody who is talking to themselves or how many of people here how many of you talk to yourself ah see, see goes hand okay the kids are the one raising their hand. The adults are too wise to talk to themselves. <laughs> yes, that is what <laughs> that is what murmur is. It's uh, you, you murmur the word of God. It's not it's not a yeah. It's not just murmuring of the mind, but it's murmuring of the heart. You bring up that word and you keep speaking it. You keep speaking it. You keep speaking the word of God. You speak to yourself. You, sp you interact with yourself. I know you, of course, you have the Holy Spirit in you. What are some of the things that you can ask while pondering? Right? While pondering on the word of God. So as you, are, as you are meditating on that word, you can be asking God, God, what does this, what is this verse? What is this saying? What does this Bible verse, what does it mean? Why, why is this Bible verse here? Just ask questions as you are pondering, as you put the word of God. Keep thinking about it. Keep, keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Hallelujah. Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. I can actually... Okay. The book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but ye shall meditate in it day and night. So you shall meditate on it what day and night, that ye may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous. So who is making your way prosperous? You yourself. When you meditate on the word of God day and night. You shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall have what? Good success. Medit medit meditate with the purpose of doing something. Meditate on the purpose of applying God's word. So when you meditate, you are meditating for the purpose of what? Actually applying God's word memorization that we just talked about is getting it queued up it's like getting it ready that's what meditation is but there's something more and that something more is what meditation meditation is what we have heard what we have read what we have studied what we have memorized and uh, when we make it to begin when we make it to begin part of us I say that again. Meditation is all those things put together. What we have, what we hear, what we read, what we study, what we memorize. When we now start to make it what part of us, it's like it is like digestion, right? Meditation is is, is digestion. Whatever you ate yesterday is now what is part of you. True or false? Whatever it is, is, is that what is part of you at the molecular level It's no longer in you, but it's now what part of you. So. The question is, what is in this book that you have opened, that you have chewed upon, that you have swallowed, that you have digested, that you are now making use of? What is it? What is it? Um, there, are, there are two disorders, uh, two food disorders that, um, that are common. Uh, one of them is uh, anorexia. The other one is bulimia there are two there are two food disorders uh, a couple of us in the in the healthcare field we know what i'm talking about these food disorder anorexia and bulimic they they are actually present 
sadly to say, in many congregations. Now, I mean, when I mean present, present in a spiritual manner, right? Present in a spiritual manner. When an, 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 an uh, anorexic person is somebody, in a spiritual sense now, is somebody that will always talk about the word of God. We hang around people that are eating. We even go to parties where food are being served. He will look at recipes. He will do everything. But guess what? They will never what, eat that food. On the other hand, which is vastly the majority of Christians that we have, vastly the majority of believers that we have in the Christendom, is they are, they are bulimic in the sense that they will eat that food, but because of that condition that they have, that food will never really get to what? Digest. They will never get the that food will never become part of them. That's that is what we call bulimic uh, bulimic Christians. There are a lot of people like that. It's like when they leave, after hearing the word like this, they will take it in. But because they didn't chew upon it, because they didn't get to that point of meditating upon it, they will they never get to that point where they are able to what digest that word for that word to be what become part of them. So how do we get something? How do we get something out of the word of God? How do we get something when we eat the word of God? Um, how do we get something from out of the Bible? The answer is simple. We make a choice to let God speak to us. We make a choice to say, God, speak to me. When I read, when I, I will let God word talk to me. When, and when he talks to me, I will word, I will listen. And then I will begin to word, think about it. And I'll begin to think about it all day. That is the meditation aspect. You, be, you, you get to that point, the word, you, you digest that word and that word becomes part of you. This is how we know that you have really gotten something out of the word of the Lord. If you still remember what it was. Many a times, and this has happened to me in the past, I, I will have my devotion in the morning and in the evening time I ask myself, what did I do today? What did I do? I will not remember. I will try and have very good memory. My wife can tell you that. I can remember things when I was six years old. I will not remember what I read in the morning. Why? Because I did not allow the Lord to speak to me. That had to change. That had to change. Hallelujah. So we are not just reading facts. I mean, it's beyond fact, but we are actually holding, holding this word and chewing upon it. Yeah, I may not remember all the details or whether there were 12 apostles and all that but there's a certain word that becomes part of you that one that you take you chew it and you digest it right that becomes and that is the meditation aspect of it so how do we learn scriptures you don't necessarily need to go to seminary school you don't need to go to bible college to go learn scripture all you need to do is to develop the discipline of spending time in the word of God. Develop the discipline of spending time in the word of God. Listening to God's word every day. You ha it's a discipline and you have to learn it. It's non-negotiable. I was talking to somebody recently. I was telling her, I was like, you are outsourcing your prayer to your, to your man of God. I said, you don't outsource it. You cannot outsource this part. You have to what? Do it. You, as a believer, you have to do it. Praise the Lord. You have to do it. You have to open the word of God and let the Holy speak, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let him open your eyes to behold all the wondrous things that is in this book. When you open the word of God, you are given an opportunity to let God speak to you. And I, and I need to say this, I believe this was somebody. Um, because I've personally I've had struggles. I mean <laughs> something that helps me when I read the Bible. It's, it, it's a mindset thing. Anytime I open this book, I tell myself this is an opportunity for God to come and what feed me. It's the mindset that I have. It's the mindset. It's very important because if, if I don't think like that, I may look at it like a chore. And when it's a chore, I will start avoiding it. So anytime you open that scripture, right, just have that mindset behind you. This is an opportunity for God to what come and what feed me. This is an opportunity for God to come and feed me. Um, Pastor Bell is not here. We call it a buffet. But that is what it is. You are feeding your word, spirit man. Very important. Have that mindset. Because if you don't have that mindset, it will look like chore. And you start avoiding the word of God. But the word of God is not chore. The word of God is powerful. Hallelujah. Alright. So, do not waste your morning. 
don't waste your morning times um let god speak to you every day listening to god the voice of god sounds from the word of god the voice of god sounds from the word of god we <laughs> this year is going to be blessed somebody say amen, amen. yeah we are already in the month of february and um, the lord is going to take us further and further in our work with him somebody say amen, amen. Um, there's an old african proverb it says that uh, if you want to if you want to go fast uh, you go alone but if you want to go further or far you go together i say it again if you want to go fast you go alone but if you want to go further if you want to go far you go together this year we will go further in jesus name uh, but we have to go with the word of god we have to hear it we have to read it we have to study it we have to memorize it and we have to what meditate upon it hallelujah uh we're going to stop here because of time uh, thank you for giving me audience uh, uh, let's pray father we thank you for your word that has come forth lord we cannot do these things except you help us we thank you for every every person you have spoken here today holy spirit expound this word in our hearts even as we live here in jesus mighty name we pray all right uh, at this point we entertain questions